If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I created, for example the Infinity Grill one, only available this month. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It's so once again the series on the Franz and Robinson constant and yeah we are going to dive right in. You know the story up until now, um, I tried it out, shit went downhill big time and now I have to think. Okay and what I did I thought well if I have convergence problems why not just simply change the interval where we are going to integrate over. But me being the ignorant papa, not caring about convergence, in a normal case I made the same mistake once again because using the integral definition isn't once again valid for this um, interval. But never mind, it sparks a little idea, okay? Okay, it sparks a little idea somewhere in the process. So we are going to take a look at the one from one to infinity. I'm terribly sorry, it's still wet right here, still a moist blackboard, my boys. And then one over gamma of x integrate with respect to x, okay? This is what we are going to take a look at just with the interval changed. That's an ugly looking gamma, I'm terribly sorry. Now, once again, the same spiel. So integral from one to infinity of sine of pi times x over pi times gamma of one minus x resulting in the integral from zero to infinity of t to the negative x e to the negative t integrated with respect to t integrated with respect to x. And just the same process once again interchanging integrals because we can use Fubini it does convert to a finite value of some sort so integral from zero to infinity this time. And then we're going to have e to the negative t over pi integral from 1 to infinity of and then we are going to have the sine of pi times x t to the negative x integrate with respect to x and then with respect to t. Now like I said this is going to give us convergence issues once again it's going to result in the same mistake but this time I thought why not actually calculate the antiderivative this time so so I I did it before somehow, but then I saw this thing with Laplace transform and it was also a thing on mass stack exchange. It's still an open problem there up until this day, even on math overflow. And now, antiderivative, I probably made a video on that. If I didn't, then it's going to be an outtake on my second channel. Antiderivative of this thing is pretty elementary, to be honest. Integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative t, over pi and then we are going to have now let me think it's a long one so we are going to have negative t to the negative x power right and then we are going to have down here definitely pi squared plus natural log squared of t other than that what we have in the numerator is the cosine of pi times t times pi plus the natural log of t times the sine of pi times t, brackets closed, brackets closed, and this whole thing from 1 to infinity. I'm terribly sorry, that's a lot of stuff to write here, okay, might. Now, we can do some arguing. What happens if we plug infinity into here, okay? As a little heuristic approach to the thing, you can also use uh, L'Hopital probably, I really don't care. This down here is just a constant, okay, finite value. Overall we have something with respect to t over t to the x power. We are going to let x approach infinity. Okay, um, this is probably, yeah, right, um, this just goes to zero, right, okay. Um, I thought we would have an x right here, that's, that's probably an x, I'm terribly sorry. I was already thinking, what the fuck, so <laughs> it's a little math talk right here, I'm terribly sorry. Now we are going to have something finite up here because cosine and sine is bounded between negative one and one. So this is just the sum of two finite things. We are just not going to consider the, let's say one minus one situation. It's basically di diverging and we don't know where it goes, okay? Somewhere between negative one and one. This right here is just a finite thing. Over t to the infinity, it's going to be one over infinity, something finite over infinity is going to go to zero. Okay? Now, we are going to plug a one into here. 
if we plug a 1 into this thing, we are going to have t to the negative 1th power. Okay, I'm going to write everything out. 0 to infinity. e to the negative t over pi. And then second part of integration gets rid of this negative sign. Then we are going to get t to negative one power over and also pi squared plus the natural log squared of t. Also, what's going to be left in the brackets? If we plug one into here, sine of pi is going to give us zero. Okay, this right here is going to vanish in the process. That's good. We get rid of this natural log right here. Okay, and also we are going to have the cosine of pi. It's going to give us um, negative 1 actually. Okay, we are going to be left with a negative sign right here and then also a pi that is going to be left. Now pi and pi is going to cancel out once again and we are going to get negative integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t over t times pi squared plus the natural log squared of t integrated with respect to t. I was doing a lot of war from alpha these days, okay? And I just wanted to compare the actual value of this thing and for example the value of this thing right here. And no, it does not work out. Once again, the e term is missing. This bloody e term, we have e plus something, okay? It, it's <laughs> it doesn't work out. This right here is approximately e plus some arrow and this thing right here is the arrow once again and it made me go absolute nuts, okay? So this thing right here is an absolute piece of shit. Was really annoying to deal with. Then kernel came around the kernel, the, the uh, kernel co came around the kernel, corner, 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 <laughs> never mind. So Colonel Ivan Valian came around the corner and I asked him if he maybe encountered this right here because this guy is an absolute madman and he does a really great job on integration and solving serious problems, <laughs> serious problems. And he actually guided me to a theorem that has been first written out by Ramanujan and it's something that looks absolutely ridiculous and we are going to derive it in the last part of the series because that was the really only way to solve this problem right here, okay? The only one I came up with or Ramanujan came up with using real methods without using complex analysis. And what the guy basically did was parameterize the integral and I think that's a cool thing, okay? So, so I was trying around and I didn't really have the solution. You, you can't find it anywhere what he basically did other than the proof of his whole theorem. So I tried deriving this thing right here. And what I did at first is, well, I was trying to parameterize the solution that we got right here. And I'm fairly certain that the negative sign right here is kind of wrong. I, I don't know why. Probably there's supposed to be a negative sign in front of the cosine. Never mind. So what I did was, well, basically, if we parameterize our integral that we have right here, we are going to be left with some function with respect to x and z over gamma of x integrated with respect to x. And, well, what is this right here? Well, we are going to parameterize it. We have this e term that we don't know anything about. That's some kind of unknown function. That's what I thought. I'm going to call it h of, and we're going to par parameterize it with respect to z also. We don't know if it is with respect to z. We really don't know at this point. And then plus our integral from zero to infinity. Let's get rid of this negative sign right here. It really doesn't matter then you are going to get a negative sign here and here and it's going to work out somehow. It really doesn't quite matter for this problem at the moment. And then e to the negative. Okay, why not parameterize our exponential function? That's a commonly used trick, okay? I have used it before on this channel. z times t over the stuff we have right here. Pi squared plus natural log squared of t integrated with respect to t. Okay, so this is what we have right here at the moment. And well, now it's our task to find out through this fallacious problem uh, process what this function right here actually is. That was my train of thought. Why not find this function out, this parameterized function that we have right here. And we can basically just backwards engineer everything, okay? 
So you see, if we parameterize this integral, e to the negative z times t, all the other stuff is not with respect to z. So we can trace it back to just this integral right here, where I did the fourth step, okay? We are going to put the negative uh, z times t term up here in the exponent of the exponential function, leaving us with an integral from one to infinity sine of pi times t over pi times an integral from zero to infinity of t to the negative x e to the negative z times t integrate with respect to t and then with respect to x. Video brought to you by Hagoromo Chalk. <laughs> now we can actually trace this back to the gamma function once again. This is something that works out. So um, let for example u be equal to z times t. That's equivalent to saying if z is not equal to zero, doesn't matter right now. Um, t is nothing but u over z. Now we can differentiate both sides. Then dt is nothing but du over z. Our upper and lower bounds are going to stay how they are. Okay, if I let t go to zero and infinity respectively, it's going to be just zero and infinity once again on the u. So integral from one to infinity sine of pi times t over pi times an integral from zero to infinity of. Now we are going to get um, t to the, no, not t, I'm terribly sorry. We are going to get u to the negative x power, then z to the x power, okay, it's the reciprocal of z, e to the negative u in this case, okay, this is going to give us our gamma function of 1 minus x once again, and then the u over z, integrated with respect to x in this case. Now, with respect to u, this z to the x minus 1 power is just a constant, so let's bring it to the front, so integral from 1 to infinity, of sine of pi times t over pi z to the x minus 1 to power and then we are going to get u to negative x okay what I said this is just going to be our gamma of 1 minus x integrated with respect to x and by the same arguments as before we can bring this together to actually get our gamma function back okay this is going to be the integral from 1 to infinity of z to the x minus 1 to power over gamma of x integrated with respect to x. We did something wrong right now, okay? And I did a lot of things wrong these days. But this is actually the, the road to the right thing. You see, by coincidence, the function that we get up here is exactly what we need, okay? So this f with respect to x and z is actually z to the x minus 1 power, just a polynomial in z basically. And we can do a simple change of variable to reduce this to a more general problem, I would say, to, to a nicer form in my opinion. We can say that um, x minus 1 is nothing but, I don't know, t for example once again, okay? Then this overall means that dt is nothing but dx. We also know that x is nothing but t plus 1, leaving us with, if like 1 into here it runs from 0 to infinity, z to the t of power over gamma of t plus 1 integrated with respect to t. And I was trying around on this one right here, okay? It, it didn't work out either. So even for example by using Feynman's technique, the Leibniz rule for integrals, I really couldn't get to the point where I could evaluate this um, remainder term here, this e to the something term, which I called h of z. Okay, it just didn't work out, just because of convergence problems. My next step would be to parameterize more and to take a different approach, namely to parameterize our lower bound that we have right here. Okay, like I said, I saw the um, example from Ramanujan and I wanted to just solve the original problem. I really didn't want to trace it back to what this guy did, okay? And this is what we are going to do in the next video. We have found out that we need a function up here, okay, for the final problem. This was one of the steps which was necessary for me to solve this problem. And I thank everyone who was involved in this process, who uh, gave me ideas and shit. It was fucking amazing and was so satisfying to finally get this off my mind. It really took away my uh, sleepy, sleepy time 
because I couldn't stop thinking about this right here. Even though it's so useless, I'm never going to use it again, but it's fun thing about stuff like this. Thank you guys for watching, this has been part two. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like, if you want to support channel a bit more by those t-shirts I created, for example, the Infinity Grill one, only available this month. And well, up until next video, have a flam day. See ya.